Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacey here with VO Buzz Weekly, and we are back! We are back. Thanks to all of our new subscribers. We so appreciate it. And for all the comments and questions. We Absolutely. love them. Keep them Thank coming. You. Guess what? We are back with part two with Blizzard Entertainment's Andrea Toyas. Let's, Let's get, get buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. So you don't, you're, people can't like reach out to you directly to work with you one-on-one -on -one or coach with you necessarily. You know, sometimes they do. I, w I wish I could, but I, I, yeah. but I need can. to sleep sometimes. But you're always posting on your Twitter. Yes, yes. Like yes. if you're doing something sure, that sure. people can register for. Yes. So. Absolutely. But when you're doing workshops, mm -hmm. you know, then of course, take mm -hmm. advantage because <laughs> yes. that's the only chance you're going to get. Yes. Um, but when you're doing that, do you find that you... Uh, that it's challenging for you, or is there something that you love about it because you're working with somebody who isn't maybe quite there right. yet, but maybe has that little yes. sparkle that you're yes. like, oh my God, yes. this person's gonna be dangerous. It's great, you know, A, what I love about it is I love anybody who's going to, when I take, when I teach these classes, some people are like, I'm a school teacher by day, a bus driver, what have you, and it's always first and foremost inspiring to meet people who are willing to get off the couch, they have a dream and they're gonna do something about it. Yeah. Because I mean, a lot of people, including myself sometimes, I'll just sit on my couch and do nothing. So anybody who's got that love and gumption for it to make an effort to pursue their dreams, mad respect. So A, I feed off their wonderful energy. Mm -hmm. But B, to your point, Chuck, it's so great. These, these students come in and for example, one girl had a higher pitched voice and we were doing a creature acting class. And she's like, I can't do low creatures, I can't do it. I'm like, look, even if your voice is not gonna hit low, low, grumbly, you know, Fred Tanishar levels, your high-pitched voice going low is going to be its own low version. Mm -hmm. So we did this whole exercise and made her low creature, and the sound that she made was terrifying, and I love working with actors, and her face was like, oh, I didn't know I could take it out of me. And it's yeah. really fun, to your point, yeah. to hear something in them, mm -hmm. You know, use my tools to kind of pry open the box a little bit and go, look what you have in there, you didn't even know you have that, and to help them discover and it's almost like I'm a music teacher because I'm helping them discover notes they didn't mm -hmm. know they had. Yeah. And when you see people who are there and they, they're like, here's my instrument, I don't know, can you help me? And you're like, here's some cool notes you can play. And they walk away like, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. That's really fulfilling. Yeah. To really, you know, whatever I can do from my years in the video game world to help them on their journey, yeah. I love doing. And so I love teaching them, showing them what they can do, and then hopefully working with them. I love these classes because I've met a lot of great actors that way. Yeah. So. You yeah. are such a lovely person. <laughs> She's a doll. I'm My high on coffee. Um, right. yeah. <laughs> Behind all the leather and all the rock and roll and the pink hair You're and so the blonde fabulous. hair. And fabulous. the bling is this beautiful, beautiful well, heart. Yes. I love actors. Bless and when, you. when people walk in and give me their soul, that's a thing. I don't take yeah. that lightly. I tell people in the recording studio, as much as we're joking around and having fun, that's a magical space. Mm -hmm. When you walk into that room, the actor's going to be essentially getting naked and bearing their soul and, and putting it in my hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't mean to have a lot of love, but I have a lot of respect and gratitude for this process right, right. and the magic that we create together. Yeah. It's very specific and very unique. Absolutely. What do you think are the biggest obstacles? You know, you'll be talking to someone, because right. this happens a lot when Chuck's doing demos, the person's talking yep. to them, it's great. They step behind the microphone yep. and it's like, oh, oh God. all of a sudden the person oh goes away. What do you think... What do you think that's, if you could give advice to someone oh, about sure. I cover, keeping themselves Sure, I cover this there. all the time because I've seen it when I work with new actors. You know, people, I had an assistant one time that the actor was trying to get the line right. And behind me, she whispered, God, can't they just read it the normal way? And it was like the exorcist. My head spun around, <laughs> foam was spitting out of my mouth. Because there is no normal way in there. When I'm talking yeah. to you right now, I'm not choosing what words to emphasize. Right. And when people are on my side of the glass, psh, it looks so easy. Mm -hmm. But I tell students, when you cross that threshold, there is no due north. There is nothing guiding you at all. So you walk in there and you're in upside down land. A couple years ago, I was brought, Blizzard forced me to voice myself in this Christmas video. Forced it was a, me. Oh no, because when I, <laughs> quick story, I got this script and it said voice director. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna cast a sexy bitch to play me. It's gonna be great. <laughs> they forced me to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna just fast forward and say that session ended with me crying and storming out of the booth. <gasps> Literally. Oh. Rewind, because I got in there, I've been doing this for so long, and the vulnerability I felt, and they, I started talking like this, I don't know why, and they said, just be yourself, and I'm like, screw you, man, These are, I don't speak like this, man. I, how can I be, I, what does me mean? I was, very, I was so rude to my director. 
I say all that because people don't realize it looks so easy. Mm -hmm. When you walk into that threshold and you go behind the mic, all bets are off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I really tell actors, you, you know, as much as being a great actor and having your toolbox, you really have to be confident and just, if you got booked for that gig, man, it's because you're rad, okay? And you yeah. are gonna have a room full of people oftentimes staring at you, judging mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. That sucks, what can I yeah. do about that? I work with my game teams. I mean, I'm specific with my game teams. I tell them, don't even cross your arms in session. If you're sitting there like this watching an actor, yes. that sends a message. Don't yeah. text. I, don't, I hate to be kind of hardcore about it, but the actor is so naked. So I always say you're, you have to really work to be confident and have balls of steel, pardon me, because mm -hmm. yeah. you know hopefully you'll have a voice director there, lock on to your director, trust them, and you're gonna have to find a way to work that muscle to ignore all else. My mentor, Judith Weston, who I love, her book, Directing Actors, First page, paragraph one, the number one job of a director is to protect the actors. If you do nothing else, form a force field around them to let them know they're safe, and if an actor feels safe, mm -hmm. then they can perform. That's what you have to do, and sometimes people might not have that person, or I don't know, yeah. but that you have to work on, as you guys know, yeah. it's gonna suck, you're gonna feel vulnerable, but you've gotta know you're rad, you're there for a reason, bring your A game, and be kick ass. That's all you can really do. And it's hard. I couldn't even do it. It is hard. Yeah. And you've got to find a way to put it to tap into your superhero voice acting power yeah. and bring it because staring, vulnerability, all that kicks in. I don't have a, a magic answer except people have to know they're yeah. bad and yeah. believe in themselves yeah. and believe they're there for a reason. If exactly. they got to the point where they got booked for a session, oh yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That tells you you're already kicking ass. Yeah. And you're just gonna have to find a way to believe in yourself. Yeah, yeah. and part of yeah. what they're selling, whether it's in an audition right. or a job, is confidence. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. That, that's gonna come through. Oh yeah. For sure. I mean, the Fred, I hate to bring up Fred and Jess, but they're amazing. Well, they, they show up and like, what do you got? Let's do yeah. it, what oh, do you yeah. wanna do? Well, that's like, it? They leak, I don't have any more? Leak, they leak confidence. Oh, totally. And improv, and there's a joy in them, there's a joy. Yes. It's confidence and a joy. And look, I know no, no beginning voice actor is gonna have that, but bring your A game, know that you're there. And you know what? Much like, you know, after I stopped crying and went back into the room, I said, I just feel really stupid right now. So if you're feeling dumb and embarrassed and awkward, as they say for public speaking, right. just tell the team, guys, I'm just feeling kind of silly, you know? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you're going to be a voice actor in video games, you just, you're going to do crazy shit. You know, we had, yeah. we had to record yeah. Fish one day and the actors were like waterboarding themselves. They were drenched in water. <laughs> I mean, shit goes, gets crazy, but you just got to be like, I know. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Yes. Oh, I yes. love so, it. So again, I wish I had a magic wand to make it easy on everybody. It's not. But with practice, I would hope they, they develop mm -hmm. this confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this might be a really silly question, but where do you see the world of video games going in the next few years? I mean, do you see any changes at all in that industry? Um, uh, it's hard to say. What I've been, what I've loved enjoying. What are you it, hoping happens? Well, what it's kind of what we're going now is a the storytelling's evolved drastically. Yes. Oh, Again, yeah. with these classes, I tell people, look, you know, I, when people send animation reels to me, I can't do anything with that because our storytelling. In the, in the time I've been here, even year to year, minute by minute, is getting much more serious, much more cinematic. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I love that our storytelling is really advancing mm -hmm. and not not being limited to our medium. You know, we're really yeah. telling a very advanced story. It's very, I just did a session on Friday that was so deep and dark and human. So I love that we are creating bigger, more diverse, more real worlds. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of what we're saying earlier, I'd like to see diversity to keep pushing forward. Yeah. I'd like to see not just Overwatch, but as many games as we can reflect the world that's around us. Yeah. So, you know, that's been great. Um, you know, mocap's been really good. I, I would, on a kind of technical level, I would, I wish that all games could really embrace the acting process more yeah. and make it more theatrical and ensemble and really, I guess, personally, from my perspective, I wish that all games and as we go on would just really embrace the acting process. Yeah. Yeah. Oftentimes, yeah. a lot of time is spent on the games, the programming, oh, go get the VO done, mm -hmm. versus really right. letting actors bring more and more of themselves to the roles. It would be yeah. so nice if there were ensemble oh, records. Oh, my, it changes oh, the molecules in the air. That would just be so I had wonderful. one on Friday. And or like, even just doing scene partners. It or, changes it everything. amazing. So aside from the industry itself changing, I really would wish that there's more that we could bring with, let actors bring more into the roles yeah. and not just sometimes yeah. treat it like get in, there, get in and get out. Mm -hmm. So on a technical level, I wish we could really celebrate that more. Yeah. Beautiful. I don't know, just predicting, you know, Blizzard is a trailblazer. Maybe <laughs> Blizzard will be the ones. Yeah, you know it. We'll that. see, just we'll saying. see. We do it as much as we can. Yes. So. So, and you just touched on this, in respect to uh, 
video game demos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there are people out there that don't even know what the hell they're doing as far as what right. they were sending somebody right. like you. Right. Can you set us straight on that? It really, more and more, as I just kind of said, that our story storytelling is yeah. advancing. And again, going back to the acting part of it, you know, uh, back in the day, I, well, I still get actually animation reels, which yeah. is, you know, I understand the animation is its own thing, but if you send me an animation an animation reel that has zany scientist, crotchety grandpa, la da da, I can't do anything with that. You know, the number one mantra at Blizzard, for example, is no Saturday morning cartoon, mm -hmm. ever. We have silly moments in our game, sure, but it's acting that we're chasing. Yeah. So I don't want a reel with these really zany, over-the-top Saturday morning voices. I need to hear you act. So I tell people now, A, you need to have a video game reel, for sure. Mm -hmm. Animation does nothing for me. And even if you don't have, let's say you haven't done many video games, then choose scenes from Game of Thrones or anything anything you like. Yeah. Choose five, three to five archetypes that you resonate with. Powerful warrior, fearless leader, wounded soldier, nurturing mother, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever you as a human respond with. Try to find five scenes that you either have or you can recreate, mm -hmm. right. and send them to me. You know, send. Let me hear you act. Let, give me scenes where I can hear you and your yeah. life story. Yeah. You know. Also, I don't need twenty-five thousand things on a reel. It's like when you go to a store. There's so many things to buy. You don't right, know what you to buy. Know where to start. So yeah. I prefer to keep it minimal. Maybe let me hear one or two accents. Maybe one or two textures. One or two that are you. I don't know. But keep. Figure out what your highlights are, what you do best, and then let me hear you act and really work your acting angle. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to hear. Yeah. I can't do anything with 50 characters of zany Scooby-Doo stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it just does nothing for me, and people don't realize that, and it's really a struggle for me to kind of get that message yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. And so. are, there, uh, are there character archetypes specifically for male and specifically for female that you feel are maybe the most common, like right. stuff that you really need in your toolbox? Right. I think, first of all, powerful warrior. I mean, it's kind of cliche, but look, yep. powerful I'm gonna warrior. need female and male powerful warriors, period. I need you to own your space in a very powerful way. Yeah. Quick note about voice acting before I go on to what I'm looking for, is I need actors who own that room. They come into that booth and they own it, and they're yeah. very present. Yeah. So oftentimes you are going to be a powerful X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you one thing that people, I don't think, um, understand that they really need is I need people, and I talk about this a lot, is to have a strong kind of mid-Atlantic accent. I need you to, you know, for those who don't know what mid-Atlantic is, it's kind of like a, it's reducing your American accent and having it be a, a touch British, softening your R's. It's kind of a Cary Grant, Catherine Hepburn accent. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, because if you are going to be in my games, I can't hear LA 2018. I can't, you know, I need you to have a voice and an accent that I can drop into Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings. Right. You know, I always think that I'm making my own Game of Thrones mixtape with mm -hmm. World of yep. Warcraft. Yep. So, mm -hmm. but I really, especially for women, it's hard to not hear, you know, women have this epidemic of glottal fry right now where it just sounds like Kardashian. Huh? And so I can't cute. have that. Wait a minute. Oh, so yeah. Isn't that what you're looking for? I know. <laughs> and I really need actors to have a kind of a, a baseline strong warrior delivery. Mm -hmm. But I need you to find a way to make your voice not sound contemporary. Oh. Because granted, maybe I can do that a bit more in Overwatch, but you know, in Diablo, uh, kind of StarCraft, and certainly World of Warcraft, you have to have a way to have a fantasy accent and a, a way of being in Game of Thrones. Right. That is a must have in my world. Mm -hmm. And some actors that I work with a lot, I think they have it. And I go, hey, can you just bang out this 10 line mid-Atlantic thing? Yeah. And they can't. Mm -hmm. So I need you to have a strong warrior in there and a way to not sound like you are in 2018. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wow. What is your, what is some of the challenges of, of your process casting specifically, and what are the highlights for you? Um, pr ca casting challenges would be probably, you know, I think accents are, can be really hard. A lot of times in fantasy, we can shortcut our story by going, oh, and they're um, Russian. Why? Okay. <laughs> or Swedish or this or that. And right. it's hard for me sometimes because we say Swedish, for example, and then when you get a real Swedish accent and, accent and you don't realize it might not be exactly what you right. want. So right. I think right. it's hard for me more and more in our fantasy landscape to find actors who can A, have believable accents and act. I often tell my game teams, look, you're going to have to choose one or the other of those. Mm -hmm. I can find somebody who can do a right accent, but the acting might take a bit more. Yeah. Or they could be rad actors, so the accent might not be exactly. So right. for me... Which would you prefer? Would you prefer... Acting, all the time. Acting, acting. All, all the time. But then it's hard, because if they can't do the accent well, 
then they get kind tripped of up bumps on that. you out of yeah. the acting. So, yeah. so if you have a choice, you would rather have the acting with the acting great wins, dialect, Acting yeah. wins right? all the time. Yeah. She would like both. She would, I would like, like both. both. <laughs> the acting, it's, it's the acting. Yeah. yeah. Because. You know, because if somebody's got the perfect accent, but they but they're reading the lines, mm -hmm. then it, it's really really hard. So in my world, my team, especially with Overwatch, uh, even World of Warcraft, but I, I'm getting asked for more and more and more accents, yeah. and I'm mm -hmm. trying to make them more and more native and more and more real. Right. Which is challenging, but also exciting because it's made me now we do, especially for Overwatch, cast globally. Yeah. But that's really hard. I was yeah. just going to ask you about that. Yes. So. Yeah, I mean, do you Egyptian have to live? And, oh my gosh, I mean, in amazing. L.A especially now in the right. coming years, to be able to do video games. Look, I think if probably if you want to make uh, a, a regular living out of this, yeah. it's certainly going to help you being in L.A. because, you know, luckily Blizzard, uh, we can cast around the world. We record around the world, yeah. you know, again with Overwatch. But for me, I'm at the point now I work for a company that understands the importance of finding the truth. Yeah. So they allow me the budget and time to find actors around the world and I can record. So that's great. So we can do that. Beautiful. But a lot of game companies don't have the time or money yeah. or manpower to yeah. do that. So if you want to make your living off voice acting, sadly, I do think it, will, it would behoove you to be in L.A. You don't have to be, mm -hmm. but it's just going to make it easier to pop into a studio here in L.A. and work with a game company. Right. Yeah. Um, Especially but, if you're really great. Right? Absolutely. Because yeah. then you're, yeah. the chances are with of, you. Of yeah. course. Of course. But, again, we, we cast from Egypt. We cast from all over the place. So we look everywhere. But if, that, if, if that's going to be your career, you do kind of have to be local. Yeah. So, um, what, yeah. And what, what was it? Challenges of casting in? And some highlights. <gasps> oh, my God. I, I, you got all day? It's we have as much time as great. you got, girl. You know, can I tell you my favorite casting yes. story that everybody's heard a million times? Yes. But this is, this is to me the moments that I just. Anybody who knows me knows I can't tell a short story, but I'm going to try. And that is my. I mean, I love all the actors I work with, but when I had to cast Doomfist, Doomfist's our big bad guy in Overwatch. They came to me and they wanted him to have a West African accent. Uh, so it had to be real, you know, so that's the whole thing. Then every time they come to me, I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? Yeah. After I calm down and breathe, um, then I sit down, okay, how am I going to do this? So I cast in L.A., London, New York, and I got lots of great auditions in. And, uh, and then I sat there at my house thinking, these are all great, but I haven't found that truth yet, you know. And it, look, this is, I'm telling the story because this is when you get, when you get casting right, it's, Something bigger than us Absolutely. happens. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, so I was sitting there in my house thinking, oh, what am I going to do? These are all great. We could bring them in. We could bring any of these actors in. They'd be great. But it's that certain. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was sitting there. I'm a, I'm a huge music fan. And I'm a huge, uh, huge fan of a Nigerian artist named Fela Kuti. For those of you who don't know him, he's kind of like the Bob Marley of Nigeria. Political activist, fought the government uh, kind of in the 70s and 80s. He's gone now, but he was this revolutionary thinker and a revolutionary artist, mm -hmm. Fela Kuti. So I'm a huge Fela fan, and I saw Fela, the, the Broadway musical, in New York eight years ago. When I was there, there's this actor who owned Fela, the role of Fela. Unbelievable, because I realized that Fela... It's very charismatic and charming. And, you know, if I played a bad guy just as a bad guy, that's yeah. so boring. Because boring. No, every bad guy is a hero of their own story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our Doomfist had to have some charisma and charm if he's going to recruit people to the dark side in Overwatch. So I thought, you know, Fela has some common area with Doomfist. Mm. So what about that amazing actor I saw in New York eight years ago? I Google him. His name was Saw and Gauja. Let me just reach out. I, you know, I'm just gonna try. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna email. So I email out to his agent. Agent writes back. Writes back quickly, going, "Sure, let's try it. He'll read for you." Long story short, he came into the studio in New York. He patched in. He's like, he sent a read in, but he's like, "I really want to talk. I want to. I, I want to know this character." Come to find out, Saw had never ever done voice work. Never done. Never done any video game work. He's a Broadway a theater actor in mm -hmm. New York. He came in. Oh, God, I still <laughs> annihilated the role of Doomfist. And when my game team heard him, they were, we were all like, it's great when an actor, but when you do casting right to answer your question, yeah. you get something much bigger than you, decide, than you thought. Mm -hmm. and because he brought Doomfist to life in ways we didn't even know, wow. we didn't even expect. Yeah. So when we brought uh, Saw in, and he basically channeled his Fela energy in his, in his own life mm -hmm. story from West Africa into Doomfist, like all of our heads exploded it. and we got something yeah. magical. So, yeah. long story short, when you're able to color like that and look outside the box and think 
in different ways, and you can combine forces. You can, pure magic happens. Yeah, things yeah. Happen. That's but I think that it also story. is a testament to you that you are willing to go the extra totally. mile after right. mile like, and not just okay, go. I think we got okay, it. Okay, yeah. this is all I have. Yeah. You go, but what about and right. what about? Good and enough is not good enough. And yeah. that's well, on you. Well, again, it's going to that truth we're talking about. I yep. need to find somebody who, and for those of who anybody watching, he at BlizzCon came to BlizzCon last year, and he was on an Overwatch panel and gave a whole speech. All the whole audience, you could hear it like a pin drop about meeting warlords in Nigeria and what mm. he's been through and da 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 da, and what that means, what what power means, and la la la. We're just even talking about it now. We're like, what is happening right yeah. now? But he brought that into the character, which is yeah. why when Doomfist was released, the internet went wild. Like, oh my God, what's mm -hmm. happening? When are you the happiest in your life? <sighs> this is going to be cliche. In session, mm. I, mean, I tell you, there's been days when I have life challenges. Mm -hmm. Um, and I show up to the studio and I think I can't, I, I can't do, I can't, I'm, I can't do it today. Or I'm angry at traffic. Or there's something bad on the news. All those things. And there's been a million times in my life where I go, I walk into the booth. I'm like, I, I can't do it. I'm just, this is gonna be a shitty day. I, I can't do it. I'm not feeling it. Five seconds later, and this is not bullshit. Five seconds later, I have forgotten everything mm -hmm. because I'm in the moment and I'm with, again. Playing with, I mean, I, playing with actors, I have this dumb theory that I feel like I don't get sick that much. Yeah. Because I am always in a place of joy and yeah. laughing and happiness. Yeah. And I think it's really amazing. Yeah. You know, Andrea Romano once called it, she calls it the sloppy sex of directing. Yeah. And I feel like that's really true because actors I know and don't know, whenever we come into the booth together, we fall in love mm -hmm. and we give each other everything. And there's such a drug to that when an actor's like, I'm yours. And then as a director, I'm yours too. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. There's such a magic in the air. And I feel anybody who's a creative artist knows what it is to be in the zone, right? Absolutely. We all know Absolutely. when you're in the zone. Yep. And by the grace of Buddha or whatever, I have this job that allows me to be in the zone. And the minute you walk into that booth, the, the magical space, and with another human being and connecting in a way, you know, in regular life, hey, how you doing? I'm good. We have that wall up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. What's mm -hmm. up? Are you good? I'm good. Whatever. Yeah. But when you connect with an actor in the booth, it's so real. Even if it's a crazy character. Yeah. Oh, we're in it, and it's intoxicating. Yeah. Good stuff. So uh, that's my happiest. That's I, I love to say, you know, when I'm at home, but I'm <laughs> the most happiest when I'm working in the booth and I get to yeah. play and be with great yeah. people. Yeah. That's well, true. let me ask you, Andre. I mean, because you, you're, you're, I mean, you're really busy, and 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 we're not even kidding about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're really, really busy. So how do you find balance between your normal life and your work life. Yeah, that's a big thing. And I won't lie, 2015, I hit a wall. You know, my mom got sick, some things happened. Yeah. She's great now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, okay. and also, you know, part of Blizzard is that you you don't, it's not 80 hours or 40 hours a week. You don't stop. And I hit a wall where I was in constant production and I had to peace out for a little while. And I went for three weeks to the UK by myself, got a full back tattoo, traveled with bands, did all this crazy weird stuff. I say all that because I realized it was driven home to me that at that point, I have a watering can, right? Mm -hmm. And most of my water goes to actors. And then the rest goes to friends and family and, and there was nothing left for me. And I realized I was burning the, the candle at both ends. And if I don't keep myself creatively inspired and healthy, I can't do it for others. Of course. So it's yeah. really important. I think that's when I really kind of started to focus on the DJing more. I'm in a band now. I play drums and I That's so do all, cool! Yeah. But my point is I have to do all this because if I'm going to give to actors, I Absolutely. have to take care of myself. And for so long, yes. I, I put myself to the side going, the actors, you know, sadly, actors, I think, were number one above friends and family. <laughs> But I realize that if yeah. I'm going to be good to friends and family and actors, I have to keep my creative reservoir filled so I can fill everybody else's reservoir. Absolutely. No, we have to put ourselves oh, on our own and we list don't. and we don't. And we don't. Yeah. And so it's really, it's, it's from big things, you know, traveling for a bit and I try to see as many bands as I can. Mm -hmm. But even staying up and, and putting headphones on and playing music at home by myself, even for 20 minutes, I have to do that. If I yeah. don't, I will go crazy. Yeah. And I really realize that. I wasn't that dangerous precipice of, of mm -hmm. going crazy. So yeah. I think we as artists of any medium have to make sure we take care of ourselves yeah. if we're going to be true to our art and true to those we collaborate with. Yeah. So, what, um, what genre? What's your band? I was going to say, uh, tell yeah. us, I want to hear about your band. Kind of, you know, look, I'm dark, moody, and goth. It's kind of post-punk. Yeah. Right, so it's really the dark and, and, and broodier, the moodier we can be, the better. So I that's what we kind of do. My best friend plays bass and plays vocals. It's kind of a Joy Division, Nick, Ta Nick Cave kind of... We're just dark and moody and angry. That's some like crazy drums. But man, when I play drums, talk about 
therapy. Oh, oh my, my gosh. goodness. Yeah, I bet you hit him hard. I right? really, I try, I try. But I, again, it's. Mm. Is there anything on YouTube? <laughs> no, I, 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 you I, I curate that. The I curate it's that in the very vault. specifically in the vault. It's in the we hope to, we know we're just, we're, we're serious, but you know, we're, all of us are so busy. We're all right, doing things. Right. So, but we're trying to get that out there. But Well, um, maybe you'll leak a little bit to yeah. us. Yeah. Well, but I'd the point is, yeah, the point is to really just do our best to take care of ourselves. Yeah. Totally. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah. And we need to do that. Yeah, for sure. We do. Um, um, we have you put her on a the mystery hot seat question. And give her a last oh, my mystery goodness. Question? There's no vodka involved with this? No. Jesus. Well, um, there might be afterwards. Maybe there's scratch and sniff if you lick right? it. I don't know. <laughs> so I just choose any? If you lick any, it, did you guys make these cards? Where did these come from? It's a game? It's called Table Topics, and they have all different subjects and we used to do the if questions. What a cool and then, idea. And then I was, you know, I like my little party Pick a games. card, any card, read so, it. Anything, and give us your pick answer. it anywhere you like. Mm, let me just, hold on, I gotta, and I, yeah. I gotta do this. Um, oh, she's feeling feel it. Like yeah. I will go with, is that one? This yeah. one. Nope, that does not pertain to me. Who's a professional athlete? No clue. Okay. Zero. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here you go. Um, <laughs> Chuck will be like, what? What? Eddie What's Van Halen? <laughs> yes. Eddie Van Halen. That doesn't really work. I'm being a pain in the ass. See? I don't really have a hometown because I All moved right. around a lot. <laughs> Another one. See you later. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Third three time the, we hope is we'll the charm. This is it. This is going to be the We're best one. We're just going to keep why? <laughs> one more. There you go. <laughs> I mean, that was like your favorite app. Ah, Shazam, oh, Shazam from the Shazam. Shazam. No. no, no, let's do one more. No matter what, you have to answer this ah, one. Ah, no. Um, do you have any superstitions? Ooh, do you? Um, I mean, this is this is really hippy dippy and sounds self serving. I don't know if this <laughs> is the right <laughs> answer, but I try to always be in the positive, right? Because I feel like yeah. when you get in the negative, That's if good. you start going. Down the wormhole and dark thoughts, you know, what you think about brings about. So I'm Absolutely. somebody who's very conscious of my thoughts. Okay. And that I try to is really, the perfect answer yeah, to that I love card. That. I really try to work the positive light, not the dark, because you bring about more. Absolutely. So okay, cool. what's your favorite number? Do you have a favorite number? Six. Six. Okay, we're gonna see what happens on page six. I love all these things. Okay. These are great. Um uh -oh. if you could have an elegant dinner. With anyone presently alive, whether you know them or not, who would you want it to be with? <laughs> She's like, uh, please with these questions. I know. Uh, I, I, I like, I, first of all, I'm not into elegance. Well, so I was going to say, it could be a picnic on a yeah, blanket in vodka the parking lot. Vodka and a dive bar. That's vodka elegant. And that's that's more more kind of that's elegant. That's much more. I, there's, I can answer this. Oh, my God, I have pressure. Um, I love the lead singer of a band called Pulp. His name is Jarvis Cocker. Pulp. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's going to be probably nothing to many people. but um, You know what? You'll be surprised. Uh, you know what the beautiful thing about, about what we love yeah. doing here is that yeah. this is never about them right. and it's never about Stacy and right. I. This, this hour is about you. Yeah. Okay. And There's no right answer, you, no right. wrong answer. Exactly. Just, you know how you talk about bringing their truth right, out? Right. This yeah. is you bringing yeah. your okay. truth out. Sure. And so it's it's what matters to you. Just, sure. human, sure. just humanity and sure. connection. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I have to say something. You we, are absolutely amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, we love having you here. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with thank us. Thank you for being here. I'm very happy to be It was a joy. It was a thank joy. You. Thank you for all that you've done I'm very, you know, any, the world. thank you for giving me the space to talk about my crime. I'm a little bit on the crazy side. So I'm very grateful to be here to talk to people who even care about this stuff. Well, you are our deal. flavor of crazy. Yeah, I love yeah. you guys. We love, I love you. you guys. Excellent. So hey, Andrea Toyas, ladies and gentlemen, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Awesome. Hey, guys, this is Andrea Toyas. I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. And if I left you with one piece of advice today, it would be always bring yourself to whatever role you do. Because as long as you bring your own truth and your own honesty into your work, then I'm going to find you and we're going to do great stuff together. Well, that's all we have. Andrea Toyas is a freaking rock star. She's amazing. Absolutely amazing. We so loved having mm -hmm. her here. We hope you guys enjoyed her as much as we did. Yes. And we're going to be back next week with some more VO Buzz for you. Yes, and keep up with all of us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys so much, and thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demos That Rock. Rock.
the voiceover demo producer to the stars, is now available to you. Visit demos.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a 